So we have here a Mitsubishi BD2G dozer. The clutch packs have worn out and we're replacing them. I've already pulled out one trying to figure out what I'm doing and it was a little hard so I thought I'd put together a video so others out there can figure out what they're doing. Obviously you can see that I've already taken off all the floor plates. Probably didn't need to take the ones off up front but certainly needed to take the ones underneath the seat here. Uh, I've removed one side. I'm working on the other side. We'll get a little closer look here. You need to take off that top plate. You need to take off all the screws all the way around. You see I'm in the process. Forgot I was going to shoot this video. So anyways, uh, I'm going to keep working here and I'll probably insert some stills and because those are a little easier to store. Anyways, here we go. So all the bolts are out. By the way, that's an M14 uh, nut that you need to take out. Now you need to take out this little spring here uh and then eventually you'll get down in here and you'll need to loosen up that uh nut right there sorry i'm using the flashlight not paying attention to the camera and um, there's probably some other stuff i forgot about already but there you go yeah sure enough i forgot all something already uh these four bolts that uh, you see right there those also need to come out before you can take out this whole contraption so the next step now is to uh, remove the brake band by the way, if you ever get into this, just like brakes on your car or whatever, um, if one side goes out, you need to do both sides. It, it's just only a matter of time, so you might as well just break down and do both. So anyways, removing this brake band, uh, you, see the, uh, you see the socket on there already, that's an, a 24. Uh, we'll use a uh, socket wrench to go ahead and release that you need to do that in order to get this other piece up here off so here we go so next step is to re remove all of that contraption right there uh, and hopefully um, you will remember to take off that spring that'll make it easier and uh, then uh, hopefully i can do this here there's a pen right there uh, try to get it from this side if i can we can see this here, sorry. See that pin right there? That needs to come out, and mine is moving easy because we did these brake bands before, but anyways, that pin needs to come out in order to get that off, so I'm gonna do that here next. So now is a really fun part. We got that off. So I have the wrench there on one side, and then we have to take off the corresponding bolt on the other side right there. Uh, there's 10 on each side. It's a 14 millimeter wrench and you need to uh, get all of them in order to get out that whole this whole pack assembly here uh, one of the things that uh, one of the online things that i found said is to go ahead and put the dozer up on blocks and i find that that was a good piece of advice it's kind of a pain in the butt but uh, i supported mine up front on the uh, with some cribbing on the blade itself. Anyways, you see the tracks are completely off the ground there. So I can rotate those tracks and turn that drum inside there. I'll bring out a come along here in a second and get those to rotate so I can get all those bolts up. Now, this is where you might have some problem. Those things might be froze in there. Uh, be patient, use some anti, use some heat probably, lots of uh, lubricant. So what I'm finding for me is in order to get these bolts out, if I use a wrench, get it on there, I can pull it around, sorry, I can pull it around and then make sure you're in neutral, put it back in gear and you're good to go. You got uh, access to a couple of bolts here, the one there and then the one over here. Uh, so just keep going until you get them all out uh also uh, if you're like me you're having to use uh, an open box in wrench in order to get in there it's just such a tight space so now here we have it all those uh bolts are off and we have this brake band here so um the next point is to get that drum off now when i did this before uh, it was a little froze there, but you'll know it when you break it loose. Um, 
I think the best thing to do uh, from my perspective is just to um, pry on it and, and try to crack it free. Once it cracks free, you should be able to lift it right out. Just a little edit here, those two arrows where I have pointing at, that's the point at which you need to uh, free this item here. Uh, I took a cold chisel and a hammer and just beat on that and finally they broke free and that's how I ended up breaking these loose. Uh, there might be a better way to do it and be careful so you don't notch things up too much. Uh, if you do, you probably need to take a file to it and take off all the high spots and smooth it out, but that's how I ended up breaking them free. Just wanted to show you, I got one side free, I got to get the other side free yet. That thing should fall down as soon as it's ready to come out. So as you can see there, that thing is freely broke loose. And what I've done is I've taken the come along and I've hooked it onto one side of the uh, brake band and then put the pin in and ran it through the other. So it's just grabbing hold of that thing, goes on to come along all the way up and attaches up there on the uh, goes in between the frame uh, sorry going a little fast here maybe and I'll just ratchet this thing up it's a little heavy it's not that big of a deal but it certainly makes life easier so I've moved into the barn now out of the rain got the parts here had some lunch uh, you can see here the two different sides this is the one that I've already cleaned up and I put back together uh, and it's all ready to go looking pretty good. This is the other one. I haven't started taking it apart yet I did want to point out though that these little keepers here um, You know with their little tabs bent up keep those nuts from coming loose as it's inside there Where you can never get to it without taking the whole thing apart again So that is going to be an important part to remember when you're putting this back together uh, I haven't done it on the new one yet or the one I've already cleaned up you see I've labeled it as well, so I know which side it's going on. So I'm going to get started on this. So almost done here. Uh, you notice I uh, got the little mini breaker bar here. Put it in the vise first to you know, loosen them up, and then you can take them right out. And you also notice that uh, I did one side you know, and left just two remaining because this thing is spring-loaded. And you can tell as I just did that, it broke loose. So um, I'm going to... Go ahead and bust this last one off and get in there so so at the next step you uh see what i've got that's upside down i'm taking this out but what you can see the real heart of it is these teeth in here and those teeth then combine between the two plates and then you get some uh that's the clutch action there it's also spring loaded you can kind of see those springs in there i'll get to show you those in just a minute so here it is all apart uh, and I kind of set it up so you can see what uh, order things go in here. So we have the top that came off, put that face down, got the ring, putting that in there face down. Sorry if I'm losing you on video. So the first thing that comes up next is one of the metal rings. I'm just going to set those over there for lack of, and then one of the friction discs. Now you notice how this has it's smooth on the inside and then teeth on the outside. I'll show you a picture from one of my, this is what was the problem on my other one. Notice no teeth. It couldn't go. I was stuck one gear only one side only. So that's what prompted all this work. Anyways, you get the picture. It just alternates back and forth. I'm going to keep tearing into this. Here's the next step. It's all apart, goes apart really fast. Wanted to again show you that. Uh, and then here's the new ones uh, that come in the kit. You get a new plate. And then uh, this is an advanced uh, version. The guy told me it's based off a Komatsu design, but you notice the teeth are metal and it's not the fiber, fiber material that's all the way out there. So fiber material is, you know, on the outside. They claim this is a better system and I, I don't necessarily doubt it. So anyways, uh, as you dump in here, lift this up, you see a whole bunch of springs and they all just kind of fall apart. Now all of this kind of needs to get wire brushed and we'll get on that next. Actually, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you another step that I do on all my projects is especially when it's a rusty piece like this uh the other 
uh, clutch pack was in much worse shape than this one. I'll keep these pa these uh, discs and everything around for spares just in case. But um, as I take and I chase the threads with a tap here, so I'll go through each one of these uh, these bolt holes here and I'll re-thread them just to make sure that the threads are nice and clean. Aids in making things go back together just so there's just no problems there. Uh, do that all the time on these rusty bits and I highly encourage you to do the same. Here I am, got all my parts and supplies ready to put this back together. Uh, have everything all cleaned up. It's a little drier today, got a little better light outside. So I'm gonna get started. And the first thing you do is you take one of the fiber discs and you put it on there. Then you take one of these little steel discs and you put it on. Sorry, trying to do this and film at the same time. Not And another fiber disc. And another steel disc. And you just keep going back and forth. I'm going to get this done and then I'm going to get set up and I'll come back here. Next thing was I slid this uh, ring, this outside ring, just down. You kind of have to shimmy it back and forth and it just slides right over. Uh, from here, we're going to take this piece right here. Go ahead and put it on top. Now, we're going to flip the whole thing on its edge. And I'm going to slowly stick those springs in there. Uh, and I'll show you a little technique to figure out to how to uh, get them to line up okay. So what I figured out here is this is a quarter inch extension, socket extension, and if I take it and slide it in through my springs, I can use it as an alignment tool to line everything up. Sorry about the video quality here, but I don't do this a lot. And then we'll just put it in one of those holes there and then I'll take the clamps here and clamp everything together. So here you can see that uh, that socket extension there, just clearly lining things up. You can see I have the two clamps there opposed to each other, and it's pretty even across there. And what I've done is I've left a couple of bolts out opposite each other, more or less, and I'll just sit there and slowly clamp this down, and then I'll get a couple of those bolts uh, tightened in there and then I'll uh, be able to tighten everything up eventually here in just a minute. So you can see I've removed the clamps. I have two bolts in there holding them together. It's all temporary at this point. We got this one and this one. Those two straight across from each other and all the rest are just kind of loose in there. So what I end up doing is uh, I take my my socket extension and I come down here and I find a hole I want to line up and then I stick it in there. Now, let's go around to the other side. Uh, let's start with that one. So what I'll do is I'll take and I'll try to stick that socket in there. And if you can kind of see the little, uh, where am I at here? If only I was better at this. Oh, there we are. So you can see that it's not quite right. So I'll just take it and give it a little tap. Trying to hard. And it does come through now. All right. Let's see if we can get a bolt hole in there. Yep, there it goes in. See, so that's that's how you do it, and you slowly work it back and forth till you can get all your nuts on there. Thanks. So now I have all those bolts all aligned in there. Uh, they're all only just barely threaded in there. And I'll put on the little keeper piece and I'll put it in there. But before I do that, I'm going to put a little anti-seize lubricant, and you can tell this has been around a while, uh, on the tips of all of the bolts. So I got two bolts in opposite. You can see that little gray bit on there. That's the anti-seize. And so what I've done here is I've tightened them all the way down. I got those keepers on there. Here's another one that I'll uh, get ready to put on. Anyways, you only put you only need a little bit on the end to uh, 
do this. So I'll go ahead and I'll stick this in this next hole here and uh, go ahead and tighten that one down and I'll just keep working my way around all the way around till I'm all done. All together now. So I've got them all tightened down. Now you notice how each one of these bolt heads is kind of at an angle to the corner and that's the way they were when they came out. Uh, makes it easier to just bend up this corner and keep all those bolts from uh, uh, coming loose, you know, while you're using the dozer. So that's the next operation. We'll use this cold chisel, just bend them up and pound them into place. So I'm now ready to go back in. I got everything all together. Um, you got, got them marked left, right. You can see all those little tabs bent up there. Uh, had issue over here on which one was it? Uh, oh, it's on the left one. Sorry, this one over here. This one right here, the little tab broke off on the inside. We put it, so I just bent up the one on the outside. So, anyways, we're all ready to go here. I just need some brake bands to show up and decided to just put brand new on. So, and we'll go from there. Here it is, assembly day. So, I spent this morning here cleaning up the uh, surface of the, the mating surface there. A uh, little sandpaper. Just get off all the crud and grime. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's not like it's a uh, head gasket. So you can see the space there. I'm going to do this side first and then I'll, uh, I'll switch over and do the other side. So I'm going to get started here. One of the things I did here was I put a little red oxide on uh, everything before I put it back together. So got the new brake bands, got that. Got the pickup right here outside the workstation today. So it's a little grizzly, so I'm just taking advantage of everything, but there's part going in. So I tried to do this without the come along. That was just too much uh, managing it all in there. So what I've done here is I've gotten uh, a couple of bolts just started in there uh, on either side. Uh, there, I haven't put on the uh, anti-seize yet, so I'm just going to use those to keep everything aligned for now. I'll take the come along off and then I'll start working my way around. But uh, you need a third hand in there and the come along is just helpful. Just want to show you, uh, got all the bolts separated out there. You got three real lengths. You got your body bolts right here, which is the shortest length. You got some medium length bolts. Those are the ones that hold on all the... Uh, uh, clutch parts and then these ones here they go into the uh, apparatus on top of the clutch uh, area so anyways um, I got everything all together here uh, it's all in everything went mostly together just as planned getting ready to hook up the spring back here and then I'll put in some of the other clutch parts or some of the other brake parts here and be right back here we are all together now uh, that was much harder than it should have probably been. Uh, you notice the uh, adjusting uh, screw there is sticking out quite a bit. I'm having a hard time getting that in there. That spring that's uh, on the bottom side of the brake band, I'll show it later, that is a little tight. So um, I actually had to take everything apart, just screw the uh, fork in there a little bit to get it started and then slowly turn it. You see um, where I've uh, boogered up the paint job that I put on there and kind of damaged the uh, brake band but anyways there's the spring I think I got it all set up here we're gonna come over here I'll show you the um, there's the underside of the case there got it all cleaned up got the RTV on there blue RTV I, that should be just fine so I'm gonna put this on now so I have everything kind of back together here got the hydraulic line back on all the uh, nuts and bolts are in and around. You can kind of see the uh, blue RTV seeped out just like it's supposed to. Um, got that spring on there. I still need to tighten the the, uh, the brake band down there. And that stupid spring in there that I keep telling you to tighten, um, I'm having a hell of a time competing against that. So I would say put that in last, even though it's in there quite a ways, it's pretty hard. Uh, as far as the uh, adjusting screw or adjusting nut here, leave that as loose as you possibly can so you can uh, get in that little fork piece that's in there that you got to bolt on. So uh, those are kind of my tips. 
and it, it just takes some fiddling around in order to get it in there. So um, I would say don't be in a big hurry. This is it's now about noon and it's taken me about half a day to get this far. It's just after four o'clock now. I've got both sides back together except one spring on the right hand side here, um, which broke. So I got to find a suitable replacement. Uh, everything's back on, tightened up a couple of things. Uh, I will say those springs that are on the back side of the, uh, the dozer back here, those are a booger to put on. Uh, I don't know the, the right way to do that, so if somebody knows, please mention it. But I'm essentially done here now. Um, I did have to use the uh, come along. Uh, I didn't get any pictures of it uh, on the right hand track in order to turn it. Um, the other side seems to turn a little more freely, so I'm not sure why. I'll finish putting this all together um, a little bit later, another day, but I am done for the day.